Welcome, I'm John Glanville, a complex anxiety therapist and researcher, and in this video I would like to explore the noticeable link between repressed childhood ADHD and the type of OCD called Pure O. Now it's my experience that about 20% of people with OCD have this Pure O, where their symptoms are more focused on obsessive thoughts and intrusive ruminations rather than any physical compulsions like cleaning or tidying up. And their compulsions may involve imagining awful situations and then avoiding any triggers or attending any places where they fear they may act upon those unrequested fears. Common manifestations of these include thoughts about causing harm or engaging in sexual abuse towards others, especially children or animals, uncertainty about their own sexual orientation, maybe sacrilegious religious thoughts, worries about contamination, concerns of a existential nature or other fictional narratives. And the more they step back from interacting with life, the more they become caught up in distraction techniques through things like playing computer games, scrolling through YouTube videos, gambling, playing music, researching, watching TV, or seeking comfort from food, alcohol or drugs. Now, the majority of indiv individuals with more typical OCD are generally introverted, self-conscious and reserved. However, this pure O group, they tend to be more extroverted and socially adept, yet these inherent skills may have become subdued to some degree. And it's my experience that many individuals who do experience pure O had some level of ADD or ADHD as a child. And I think ADHD is a brain configuration rather than a brain disorder. And it tends to make a child spontaneous, excitable, daydreamy, optimistic, self-indulgent, forgetful, disorganized, trancey, and sort of easily distracted. Their fast and creative inner imagination is often so rich, so powerful, and so immersive that they may get easily diverted and forget what they were doing and lose track of time in the real world. As a result, they frequently fail to follow directions and often leave everything until the last minute. They are great about starting things but get bored easily, so often struggle to finish their projects. However, when emotionally healthy, these extraordinary individuals bring a wealth of positive qualities to enrich and stimulate society. They infuse fun, vitality, creativity, freedom, bravery, and a uniqueness of expression, exploration, and entrepreneurship, along with adventure, change, and cheekiness into our lives. And one of the most frustrating traits about people with this brain configuration is that even though they often know what they want or, that, or what they need to do, they procrastinate like crazy and find it hard to take action towards those intentions unless painful deadlines, smart strategies or other people are in place to keep reminding and prodding them into taking action for their own well-being. And if we jump back to their childhood, if parents, schooling, culture, religion or even peer pressure suppress their natural enthusiasm for life and individual expression, by forcing them to focus on studying, behaving nicely, fitting in, and trying to control their extroverted and impulsive tendencies. Or if they had to grow up quickly to take on lots of responsibility at a young age, their creative and imaginative brains may have developed complex thought processes to manage those stresses. They would have had to force themselves to look like they were concentrating and they would have had to develop techniques to resist randomly talking without thinking and found they would have had to find ways to dampen their innate curiosity, independence and spontaneous impulsiveness. Though these learned strategies may have stopped parents and teachers from shouting at them for being late, for being loud, talkative, cheeky and disorganised or blaming them for everything that they lost or went wrong, these fitting in strategies often came at the expense of suppressing their natural joy for life as well as repressing their anger and frustration at life. Furthermore, these habitual thought patterns would have assisted them in coping with their boredom instead of simply rebelling or abandoning their responsibilities to just directly pursue their own desires.
We might say that these individuals do want to travel, they do want to meet people, they do want to bend the rules a little, they do want to become more creative and have more fun. Can you see that the suppression of this true nature to better fit in during childhood can only be unconsciously done by making, making those natural desires seem more frightening? I think this is why unconscious pure O targets the opposite of who that person really is. Let me give you an example. They consciously desire to travel, but unconsciously fear traveling. They consciously desire to be social, but unconsciously fear abusing those they meet or unknowingly they sabotage their relationships. They consciously want to break rules, but unconsciously fear other people being upset or telling them off. They consciously want to be free to do as they wish, yet unconsciously they fear some imaginary contamination might get them. I think that looking at things from this perspective can help make sense of these thoughts and feelings and help helping the person to see things from this new perspective can be very, very lim liberating. Basically, they are not living the life they were born to live and are using their wonderful imagination destructively upon themselves rather than creatively in the external world via art and music or my other artisan creative endeavors. Now, in some individuals, pure O may lead down to more destructive unconscious behaviors related to things like body dysmorphia, hypochondria, body disassociation, eating disorders, a fear of madness or schizophrenia, and other deeply repressed conditions such as Tourette syndrome. These behaviors unconsciously distance the individual even further from life when they naturally should be out there engaging with it. For some, though conventional study and revision are challenging, luckily they're intelligent enough to pass exams anyway, which may lead them into further education and jobs that are serious, process-bound and restrictive, thus frustrating and exhausting their true carefree nature even further without them realizing. But what's important to consider is these tendencies or developed strategies are often not in alignment with the true essence of who they naturally are and this can be so very confusing as an adult. You might say their intellect has become all serious whilst their heart still yearns for freedom, expression, non-responsibility and creativity. Finally, though hard, it's my experience that pure O is the most easily treatable of all OCD types if they can get the right help and the right guidance to understand who they really are so that they can reclaim their natural dominance, playfulness and desire for creativity and adventure. Now this short video is an extract from a longer essay included in my OCD recovery course and in it I discuss my experience of living with an ADHD adult um, and how surprising it is that many people with OCD may also have ADHD without being aware of it. Uh, please feel free to check it out.